What's going on guys? So thank you for joining me in this brand new 2023 Ram Heavy Duty Rebel pickup truck. This is a three quarter ton pickup truck and I'm going to tell you they have done so many things just absolutely right about this truck. This truck is such a great truck but there are some things that I definitely want to comment about so hang tight I'll be right back. All right, so we've had this truck now for several days and I've had an opportunity to drive this on all sorts of different types of conditions, whether it be a perfectly smooth road like this or some really roughly paved roads to some very kind of mildly off-road environments. And while driving this truck, um, one thing I can certainly say is it's a three quarter ton truck. Now Ram has arguably probably come the furthest along in terms of ride quality when it comes to three quarter ton trucks however this truck still rides like a three quarter ton there's no denying that especially when you compare this to their half ton truck lineup whether you get the air spring or the coil sprung suspension on a half ton uh, this truck which has a coil sprung rear suspension and it's progressively rated so you know the first first inch or so is very very soft and then after that it definitely firms up but you can definitely tell this is a three quarter ton truck. Now I've done videos showcasing this truck in terms of payload, how it handles weight, all the way up to the maximum payload capacity this truck is designed to handle based on the sticker on the door. And to be honest with you, I think it performed very, very well. But that said, I would not expect, you know, half ton Laramie Longhorn air suspension ride quality out of this truck. Um, it's definitely more in line with other three quarter ton trucks, um, but I would definitely say it probably for the first little bit of movement is a bit softer. Now, I like that. I like the way the truck rides because I'm all about three quarter ton trucks, but this truck does feel at times like it wants to kind of buck you around a little bit. And the comparison between this and say my F450 is that my F450 feels jarring. It feels, when, when you go over bumps, it feels very sharp. Um, and what I mean by that is you don't get much of that bouncing feel. You just kind of get this really, really sudden and extreme jolting feel in my truck. Whereas this truck, feels a little bit more on the springy side. So if you hit the same type of terrain, the same type of bumps, this truck feels more like you're you're being sprung up and down versus that sharp jarring feel. Um, I don't know if one's better than the other, it's just an observation. Uh, you know, when my wife rides in the truck, she's certainly probably the best critic I have in terms of, you know, ride comfort on vehicles. And she doesn't really care for the suspension on this truck, but she hates the suspension on my F450. So this is definitely an improvement over that. Now, her favorite vehicle of all time in terms of ride comfort, believe it or not, is the Ram Limited half-ton truck that we reviewed about eight months ago. That truck had air suspension. That truck felt like you were riding on a, a pillow of air or a cushion of air. It was just absolutely incredible. Um, this truck doesn't feel like that. Also, this truck is more of an off-road inspired truck, but not so much that you would compare this directly to something like a power wagon, which is really designed for extreme articulation, extreme off-road. This truck to me is the perfect balance between a truck that gives you great off-road capabilities, especially with that rear locking differential. It doesn't have the front locker like the uh, power wagon does, but it balances that off-road capability with towing and payload capacity because a power wagon has to be honest with you pretty horrendous towing and payload capabilities i think slightly over 10,000 pounds worth of towing and around 1100 pounds worth of max payload whereas this truck with a very similar engine has almost 3,000 pounds worth of payload capacity and upwards of more than 16,000 pounds worth of max towing capacity. So this truck is absolutely geared more towards folks who are going to use the truck for towing as well as maybe a little bit more extreme work because you just have the capacities you need to be able to accomplish that. Now, when it comes to the interior of this truck, when it comes to features, this is not the most specced out, you know, highly equipped version of this truck you can get. There are several different flavors of the Rebel, whereas the Power Wagon does have several different flavors, but the suspension and things like that are pretty much going to be the same. This truck, you can either opt for a Cummins diesel or you can get the 6.4 liter Hemi. The one that we're driving has the 6.4 liter Hemi paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. And again, with a rear locking differential. Um, that said, 
The engine feels perfect for this truck. You know, there's many, many great reasons to look at gas-powered trucks today, where in the past you may have only looked at diesel-equipped trucks. If you're still going to do extreme towing, it definitely makes sense to look at a diesel-equipped truck, simply because these gas-equipped trucks aren't going to be able to match those in terms of towing capacity. And when it comes to fuel economy while towing, it's going to be better fuel economy with a diesel. Um, but when it comes to fuel economy when not towing, they're about the same. It's not going to be, you know, that big of a difference between the two. So if you don't do a tremendous amount of towing, then a vehicle like this might be absolutely perfect for you. So it really depends what you plan on towing. Now, this specific truck, what's really nice about it is that if you do plan on towing and you want to go with a relatively heavy travel trailer, this might be the ideal truck for you because you could easily get upwards of, you know, 12, 13,000 pounds in a travel trailer, which believe it or not is on probably the extreme weight of travel trailers and travel trailers that are that heavy are going to have a lot of length to them as well. So you're probably going to be approaching 38 to 40 feet in a travel trailer. And this truck would arguably handle it pretty well. Um, only because again, the way this truck is designed, the way this truck is set up is for towing and you have a lot of payload capacity. So even if you're approaching 2,000 pounds worth of payload capacity on the back of the truck, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be struggling too much because you still have roughly 900 to 1,000 pounds worth of additional payload capacity for the people, the supplies, the hitch, everything that you're going to have inside of the truck. So these are just really good things to think about whenever you're shopping. And because of the curb weight of this truck being as heavy as it is with that heavy duty frame, you're going to have the weight you need to be able to keep a trailer relatively steady. Now, you would probably still want to be concerned about sway. So having a sway controlling hitch probably isn't a bad thing. And then the other part you're probably going to want to be concerned about is specifically how the tires are going to handle different types of towing environments. And you can kind of feel that suspension or hear it in my voice as we go over bumps when I talk about that, that kind of bucking feel that you get with the suspension, more of a springy feel. But uh, yeah, whenever we talk about sway, again, you can't just factor sway from a, a trailer perspective. You also have to understand what your vehicle is doing to cause sway and what type of tires you have on your vehicle. Tires play such a big role in terms of a vehicle stability and sway as well. If you have big, beefy, off-road you know, mud tires, that means you have big, tall tread blocks, those rubber blocks that are used for traction. And those big rubber blocks do what rubber does, and that's flex. It flexes side to side. So imagine you have 1,500 pounds worth of tongue weight on the back, and all of a sudden you add a crosswind you add a trailer with not perfect aligned axles and that trailer is wanting to move or that wind is hitting it. Believe it or not, those tread blocks flexing side to side and bending and deforming can also contribute to this sway type feel. Um, another thing that can as well is those big tall tires. Those off-road tires are generally relatively soft and they're designed to be able to kind of articulate and go over rocks and off-road conditions. And that articulation and movement can also contribute to a sway type experience because it means the tread may be stationary on the ground, but the sidewall of the tire is flexing side to side. So again, there's a lot of different things that can make you feel like you're encountering sway. Anyways, we've taken the truck out here to North Padre Island and we have it in four high right now. And uh, yeah, I'm just driving around out here a little bit and kind of seeing how this performs out here. It's the first time I've had a chance to take it out to the beach. Um, a lot of people understand what type of conditions you go through when you go through soft sand like what I'm approaching in front of me. A lot of folks, if you're going to be doing this a lot, choose to air down their tires so you have more surface area touching the tire. And the tire also has the ability to kind of flex and, and contort to the different road condition underneath it. So, you know, a lot of folks, when they start to get stuck in sand, you can actually air down your tires and probably get yourself out. Um, in a truck like this with sand conditions the way they are, I don't think I'm at much risk of getting stuck. But if they are, you know, it's always a good idea to be able to air your tires down, which you can do in something like this. Um, but you'd have to air it down, of course, and then have some means to fill them back up whenever you get off of the sand. So that's kind of a key component. Sometimes you can go down to like 5 PSI in your tire without the bead actually breaking loose. And again, whenever you get out of this condition, you need some way to be able to fill your tire back up. And I've done a couple great videos on Vi air compressors and a Bulldog compressor and things like that. So when you get those portable air compressors, 
that's one thing they're really good for is reinflating your tire if you've had to air it down for whatever reason. Or shoot, if you just get a hole, you need to patch the hole and have the ability to fill, you know, tire back up with air. And e-trailer carries a bunch of that stuff. So quick plug for e-trailer. You can probably hear the truck kind of moving around a little bit, that suspension working here. And again, we're in four high right now. No real need to uh, lock the rear diff at this point, but the sand is certainly getting a lot softer over here. And you guys know, every time I get an off-road inspired vehicle, I like to take it to the sand so I can get a bit of a feel for how it handles. And with this three quarter ton suspension, you can definitely tell it's getting through it and you can definitely tell when you're hitting little ruts and bumps because the truck does wanna, wanna do a little bit of bucking on you. I'm not going to say it's the smoothest ride. Definitely when you're on a pavement or concrete, this thing feels really, really smooth on a highway. But when you get out here on these types of uh, sandy, rough conditions, you can probably hear in my voice that it uh, it's definitely not the smoothest ride. And people go driving really far out here so they can find the perfect fishing spot. And you'd really be surprised some of the vehicles people will take out in the deep sand. But yeah, this thing is a really, really cool truck. It, to me, has a very power wagon look to it. Um, I don't know if they're gonna offer a winch on the front. I really hope they do, because I think this makes that perfect mix between the two vehicles. And a lot of people want a three quarter ton truck for its towing prowess, its towing capability, and its payload capacity. And a truck like this is nearly perfect for all that, um, or actually it is perfect for all that, but again, people also want to know that, you know, if they get into a bad situation, especially alone, you have the means to be able to get yourself out of it. And that's really what that winch is for. So you can pull yourself out of a situation or help somebody else get out of it if you need to. So that's a feature I would love to see on the front of this truck. But, you know, honestly, it's not that difficult to add a winch or to get a, uh, a bumper that supports a winch, but it is extremely foggy out here. And there's still a lot of people out here enjoying the beach. Very cool truck though. You can definitely tell the sand's getting thick. There we go. Now, few things about this truck that are really, really cool. Um, first of all, it's really comfortable. The seats are really comfortable. Uh, the ride, again, on road, it's perfect, beautiful. But when you start getting in some of these rougher conditions, you definitely can tell this has an enhanced suspension that's more designed for payload and, and towing. All right, I think we are going to turn around, start to head back. Okay, so we are all turned around now, heading back. Yeah, this thing is absolutely an amazing truck. Now, this, in my opinion, would be the perfect truck to tow something like that uh, Palomino Paws. If you guys didn't look at that ultimate off-road RV that's actually built here in the US and rivals any I think any, any off-road RV from any other country, you guys definitely need to check that thing out because that thing was, was, man, I'm gonna say it was among one of the coolest RVs I have ever filmed since filming RVs. And I got a full video on it. Just look up Palomino Paws and uh, you'll get a good idea of what makes that thing so special because that RV just about answers every concern people have had for an RV. Build quality, materials, um, design, the elements that go into it, function, all of that is really, really answered well by that pause. We're going through some real soft stuff now. Yeah, this thing, uh, it likes to play in sand, but you can definitely tell that it's a heavy vehicle. Very cool. But yeah, this again, this would be perfectly paired to something like that Palomino Paws. That thing was such a cool RV. You tow it behind something like this, you got the payload capacity, you got the towing capacity, you got the look, you got the complete package. And this I think would be the type of vehicle someone would buy for an RV like that, or the type of RV someone would buy for a truck like this. I think they're kind of the perfect pairing. But I would love to know what you guys think. If you haven't had a chance to see much about this truck, check out the other videos I've done on it because it's really, really worth taking a close look at. Yeah, again, this truck, this truck is really designed to check all those boxes that you're looking for. Now, 
as as great as the capacity is on this truck, almost 3,000 pounds, I still don't think this is the truck that's right for you if you're looking to haul a fifth wheel. I don't care really what size it is, unless it's like a micro fifth wheel. But yeah, this truck to me is like the ultimate travel trailer towing vehicle. It really is. This thing is perfect for that type of a setup um, where you have a lot of pin weight or a lot of tongue weight, I'm sorry. You have people, supplies, generators, stuff like that inside of the truck while at the same time you have that towing capacity you're looking for and you don't have to opt for a diesel. You don't. This truck is going to give you all the capabilities you're looking for with that 6.4 liter Hemi. Anyways guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. This is such a cool truck. Um, I've really enjoyed driving it. Uh, you know, for me, the ride's not that bad. I know some people will really care about that because you know you may be looking to move to a truck like this from a half ton. Don't expect the ride to be similar because this certainly feels like a three quarter ton truck. As nice as it is, it still is gonna is definitely gonna feel more like a three quarter ton. But um, I'll tell you that this thing has a lot of capability and a really cool package. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. I'm gonna work my way through this this really soft sand and. Uh, get this truck back to the house. We'll talk to you again real soon.